This episode of Express Training Bites is brought to you by Promo Corner. Are you looking to support a sales campaign and reach a larger audience? Raise your brand awareness with content sponsorships. For more information, reach out to sales at promocorner.com. This is Express Training Bites. I am Brandon Petrich, and uh, I'm the digital media director uh, for Promo Corner and digital, digital space, right? That's where the future is going for promo. And Lisa Fosdick is doing her part three of a three-part series all on the future of promo. And I'm going to let her get to it, talking to us today about NFTs and smart contracts. Lisa, take it away. Hey, thank you, Brandon. Um, nice to be back. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in for the third time. Um, you may be wondering why I have welcome in the background. Um, and I have my HODL t-shirt on again today. Um, welcome to the future of the promotional products industry, in my opinion. Um, I think uh, NFT smart contracts and payment gateways are really going to change some of the ways we do business. And I'm super excited to talk to everybody about those three topics today. Um, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot of information at once. I tried to keep it high level. So as I've mentioned on my prior two segments, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, my cell phone, email. I'm available um, to chat and talk through some of these topics at a deeper level. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, get back to the topics where we left off last, last week. So, so far we've covered blockchain and crypto basics cryptocurrencies and exchanges. And uh, today we're going to talk about NFTs, smart contracts and payment platforms. Um, who am I? I'm not gonna spend our time today on that because I've gone over that and we have too much to talk about. But here's my contact information and I will be sharing that, this deck with Brandon so he can post it. And if you haven't seen the prior segments, uh, Promo Corner's Facebook page has the recordings. Why is crypto important, in my opinion, in the industry? I do want to touch on this uh, quickly because it does relate to the topics today. Borderless payments, changing the way commerce happens, gives access to underserved and unbanked communities. I believe it's the next evolution of our financial system. It's life-changing in the way the internet was. Wealth can be created and boy, wouldn't it be great if a lot of that wealth could be created in our promotional products industry. So um, we're gonna talk about payment platforms, NFTs of branded merchandise, charities, smart contracts and supply chain in our industry. Ethereum, um, of the big three, Ethereum is relevant here uh, related to NFTs because a lot of NFT technology is built on Ethereum. It's not the only um, blockchain that enables a lot of this technology, but it is the one you hear about most in the news. So let's dive right into NFTs. What is a non-fungible token? Um, it's not a yucky fungus thing. <laughs> it is actually um, a way for you to buy and sell ownership of unique digital assets and allows you to keep track of them on the blockchain. And it gives your digital asset a unique signature um, number hash that is only related to that piece of digital content. So an NFT can be digital art, it can be drawings, animated GIFs, songs, or items in video games, or pieces of video, and it can even be tweets, which we will get into in a minute. So there's a few um, different use cases for when you would want to mint a non-fungible token, and we'll talk about minting too. Minting is the process of creating your non-fungible token. And there are a number of platforms that allow you to do that. Most famous or most heard about is OpenSea. Um, Ghost Market is another one that um, actually is more in the gaming space. Um, and I have a link here for NFT basics for the folks who wanna learn more about it. So 
why are NFTs relevant to marketers? Because we're, we're really in our DNA marketers, right? Like we talk to our clients about how to use promotional products to market your business and gain brand equity and build um, a fan base or a following for your brand. So NFTs are valuable in that they can be trackable and easily bought and sold, which wasn't available to uh, marketing and branding in the past. And when you mint a token, it allows it to be protected from fraud, forgeries, and fakes. Because when you mint or create your item on the blockchain as a non-fungible token, the blockchain cannot be changed. Um, so that token and NFT hash is connected to your digital asset forever. So I believe that allows us to be able to monetize logos, pieces of art, content, tweets. And we're seeing this in the greater world. Um, and I have some use cases and uh, examples to show you. So just to give uh, crypto art and content, content some context, boy, that's a tongue twister. Um, crypto art is in essence, digital art that lives on the blockchain in this form of a non-fungible token. So when you hear, hear the word mint, um, that is the vernacular that's used in this ecosystem to describe the process of giving your digital piece of content that numerical hash. So that's called minted. And there are uh, music uh, platforms coming on, video platforms, and then of course, marketplaces like OpenSea, Rarible, um, some of the other ones you may have heard in the news. And a simple way to think of it, in, in my opinion, in the way I've described it to um, folks, my friends and family is, minting gives that digital piece of content a provenance. So when you buy an antique at Sotheby's, you get a piece of paper that tells you the provenance of that antique or that painting. This is that in a digital format on the blockchain in the form of a numerical hash that becomes a token. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, and I'm going to give you some examples of some famous NFTs. So Jack Dorsey of Twitter, he went ahead and minted his first tweet as an NFT, um, turned it into a non-fungible token. So it had a trackable digital hash associated with it. And he sold that token for $2.9 million and then he donated that to charity. So I invite everybody to Google that. Um, that was really one of the first uh, famous use cases that happened in March. And you might be familiar with NBA Top Shop. Top Shot. Um, this is really a really cool platform that takes sports highlights, video content, mints them as non-fungible tokens, and then sells those um, NFTs on the Top Shot platform. So that's really cool. You can purchase a pack of video highlights. You can purchase licensed video highlights. Um, like you can see the winning shot of a playoff game. Um, just really, really cool. So invite, I invite everybody to check that out as well. So other famous NFTs that you might have heard about, and this might help connect the dots for you, is there's a digital artist, his name is Beeple, and he minted um, I believe it was 5,000 of his individual pieces that he had made over 13 years. Like, look at this piece. It's incredible. And if you Google it and you start to zoom in on it, you can see the incredible detail in each individual piece of this mosaic. And this was auctioned off for $69 million um, through Kit Christie's. Wow. Try to get your head around that, right? Um, and then moving into another use case, um, which is near and dear to my heart, which is charities. So Nora Health um, is a charity that decided to take this leap into NFTs and, and the world of crypto. And they created a Beeple-like mosaic. You can see it here, Save Thousands of Lives. And they created an event on Clubhouse, which is a social media um, place where people go and talk about different topics. 
And they actually raised $4 million. They sold this NFT on OpenSea and they drove donors to the event and the platform using Clubhouse and um, 1,235 Ether at the time translated into, I think, 4.5 million raised. Um, and then on a smaller scale, I want to give a shout out uh, to Debbie Nearman from HGX Creative, total risk taker, total badass woman of promo who uh, went ahead and in the dairy industry has a presence. She created an NFT, uh, minted it on OpenSea. And so she's learning the industry, learning how to use NFTs to uh, help some of her brand clients. Um, other brands, uh, famous brands, Pizza Hut created a non-fungible pizza token. Charmin has non-fungible toilet paper. Uh, Pringles related a crypto crisp. Um, and in that case, the proceeds were going to the artist. And then Taco Bell created tacos and that uh, money went to charity. So here's a picture of the Taco Bell, one of the ta Taco Bell um, NFTs that they auctioned off. Here's the Pringles image of the Pringles NFT. Now, I don't show the movement here, but both of these pieces were animated. So I'm going to take a pause here and go back to Brandon and see if he has any questions or wants to uh, you know, interject at this point. No, actually, so guys, if you are watching live on any of the social media platforms, uh, I have also posted this over to the Promotional Products Professionals page, but I have put links for part one and part two in there as well, so you can get caught up after this, but NFTs are so awesome. I think that's so cool that we already have somebody in the promo industry that's jumping on it. Like, well done. This absolutely is the future promo. Keep going, Lisa. I'm, I'm pumped. Okay. Thanks, Brandon. So another brand use case that I think is really fun, um, and I, many of you may too, and I bet we have a lot of people in the audience who actually collect kicks. Um, Gucci is entering through the virtual luxury footwear um, avenue by creating kicks that um, can be worn in augmented reality. And Brandon and I were talking about this a little bit before we went live. And this is, this is mind expanding stuff. Um, Brandon brought up the Ready Player One movie where the uh, hero wins a video contest or a video game and ends up having points and money to spend in the virtual world or in the real world. He could have bought these uh, Gucci sneakers in the artificial real augmented reality world and worn them in a metaverse. And I just think that's super cool. And there's also virtual reality where you can create an avatar and actually attend a trade show. So one of the things that I aspire to, and if there's a distributor out there who wants to take this journey with me to create a t-shirt, a virtual NFT t-shirt that can be worn in a virtual trade show by an avatar. Wow, how cool is that? Um, so some use cases for promo, I mean, that's really what we're here to talk about is how does all this, um, you know, mind bending stuff relate to our industry. So a couple of ways that I would like to talk about, and again, I invite uh, risk taking distributors to give me a buzz and let's figure out a way to do some of these things. Um, and Debbie, again, my hero, has been a great partner in trying some of these things from HGX Creative. Um, so give her a shout out um, for her amazing distributorship. But um, NFT wearables on a company store for purchase. So if you picture you have a company store for Coke or um, an Entergy or any of your clients who might even be flirting with the crypto space or in the gaming industry or related to sports, um, you could work with them to create some NFTs that can be purchased on a company store. So I think that's super cool and uh, would love to explore, explore that more. And as I just mentioned, an NFT wearable can be worn by an avatar in any metaverse. Um, so it can be worn in a gaming metaverse. It can be worn at a virtual conference. It could be worn at a virtual sporting event. 
um, there's so many ways that that um, piece could be used. And another way I like to think of it is with charities. So another shout out to a distributor um, who has taken this leap with me, and that's Jerry Barker of Barker Specialties. So if you click on NFTs for charity, oh, sorry, I have a little typo there. Um, but I would love it if folks listening um, would visit nftsforcharity.io. And you can read all about how Cher Jerry and I ha have created um, a way for charities to mint NFTs and then auction them off or sell them for donations. Um, so exciting use case. Let's talk about smart contracts for a minute now. So I want to sort of wrap up NFTs. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. Um, it's a token that's minted on the blockchain that is connected to your digital content that gives it an identity. And that content can be a logo, a, a piece of digital wearable. It could be a tweet. It could be a video. It could be a piece of art. And I would love to do another segment with Brandon on unlockable content and other uh, bells and whistles that go along with NFTs. But today I'm going to switch gears and go into smart contracts and how smart contracts uh, relate to our industry. So smart contracts are written as code and they're committed to the blockchain. And in that code are conditions um, to the contract that are publicly available on the ledger. And written into the contract is often events that trigger things to happen. And I'm going to go through some of those in a second. And regulators or people who own the smart contract or are parties to the smart contract can actually follow the contract and understand when different milestones have been met, releasing either product or payments. So in essence, a smart contract is a pre-specified agreement on the blockchain between two parties or multiple parties that evaluate information and automatically execute when certain conditions are met. Now, many of you, I hope, are taking that leap to supply chain for the promo world. You know, we import a lot of our products and even our made in USA products can benefit from a smart contract. So because the contract exists on the blockchain, they're immutable, they can't be changed. And they're verifiable, which means um, they can be accessed by anybody who you give access to. So that guarantees a high level of trust within the agreement. So because a blockchain um, is a single chain of discrete blocks of information, that are arranged chronologically. And we talked about this in our first segment, that the numerical hashes link to each other and the numerical hash can only be used once. That's a nonce, a number that can only be used once. So that gives this its uniqueness. So in theory, any type of contract between two parties or multiple parties can be established on the blockchain as long as both parties to agree, agree to the contract. Now, what is important about this is that a middle person is not needed. Um, you don't need an intermediary party to administer your contract. So I have a little infographic here that I think might uh, help a little bit here. So if somebody wants to create a contract, the contract is created on the blockchain it's validated on the blockchain. And then under this segment that says smart contracts here, you can see some examples of when different parts of the smart contract could release or make something happen. Like once goods are issued, that creates the shipment. Once a pickup is confirmed, that activates potentially a sensor that's in the shipment that's going to track its project, pro, pro, uh, sorry, it's trajectory, it's progress, it's uh, delivery progress. And then when proof of delivery is attained, then maybe that releases the issuance of a bill or an invoice or a payment. So if you can think of this in relationship to um, how distributors do their own importing and suppliers, 
that we have to pay our factories up front uh, with a wire transfer for, or an ACH um, and that gets released like halfway or we pay 50% up front and then 50% gets released and then the balance is due when the goods hit the dock. Well, this could break that into smaller chunks and additional milestones like it leaves the factory, it gets to the dock in the country of origin, it gets on the ship, the ship hits the dock, the goods enter customs, the goods are released from customs. So there's more opportunities to parse out the monetary consideration instead of just the two options we usually get offered now. So um, that's how I, one use case for how I see smart contracts helping our industry track shipments better. So VeChain is um, one of the more developed uh, companies in this space that is doing this. And they include in some of their smart contracts quality control. So the testing part, like I know many of us have lived through testing of our goods overseas to make sure they meet FDA standards or our own manufacturing standards. Um, so quality control, authenticity. Now this comes into play with uh, big brands like Gucci. So things can't be knocked off. Storage temperature. You know, some products get compromised if they get too hot or too cold. Custom status, transportation medium. Is, are your goods leaving the factory and country of origin by a bicycle <laughs> or are they on a truck or a train? Um, so there are different um, transportation milestones that can be built into the smart contract. And folks ask me, well, how does somebody know what's happening? Well, um, this group, VeChain, and other do, folks do too, but this is the example I'm using, is radio frequency identification. So um, these tags are included in the shipment and those sensors uh, broadcast back data to VeChain that they then put on the blockchain to um, go into the smart contract. So a lot to take in, a lot of this is still in development and a lot of it is happening, but that is really the overall use case for smart contracts in the supply chain. So um, suppliers could track shipments they are importing from other companies. Funds can get released at different stages of the journey. If the items being made in the US, maybe a smart contract might include when the raw goods hit the, hit the factory, in apparel when the goods are cut and sewn, maybe when the goods are dyed, and then maybe when they're imprinted. So those are some just examples of um, data that can be programmed onto the blockchain into your smart contract. So I think I'll take a minute here and invite Brandon back in and see if he has any questions. Uh, no questions yet from the audience, but you guys, this is absolutely the future of promo. I, we, what blockchaining has allowed to happen is a whole new e-commerce section. And it's not just a, you purchase it online and then everything else is done outside of, right? This is everything is trackable, traceable, back secure, everything. It is yours. There's no more calling, 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 writing emails over emails. Everything is automated. This stuff is all built inside and it's all secure under that uh, block. And I, I just think that we're all looking for some type of security when we are working with other factories in areas that we can't travel to. Uh, and this is going to provide that. So Lisa, thank you so much. Yeah, keep going. So um, just to tie up what Brandon um, mentioned, so this can work for suppliers importing or from their factories or getting raw goods. It can also work for distributors, supplier to distributor, supplier advising distributor where their shipment is, and then also distributor to client. Um, so there are a lot of use cases built in there. And again, I'm, I'm hoping Brandon might invite me back to expand on some of these topics. Um, but thank you, Brandon, for uh, reiterating that in a way that reminds me that distributors also can use this technology. 
So now we're going to switch gears again. Um, so a lot to take in in a short time. And I know I only have a couple minutes left, but this to me is really a use case that the industry can adopt um, without a heavy lift and, and in the near, near future. And that's payment gateways um, and middleware to be able to accept cryptocurrency. This just gets me super jazzed. And it enables some of the other things that we already talked about, like creating NFTs on your company store um, to be worn in the metaverse or to help charities be able to auction off NFTs. Um, and again, Jerry Barker and I through NFTs for charity, we can show work with our distributors in the promo industry to show them how to do that. Um, and we're super excited about that. So payment gateways come into play in a number of different ways. It's also important uh, to allow your clients to be able to pay you in crypto. Maybe suppliers could take payment in crypto. And what I think is super exciting about this is when you think about the internet and our distributors who jumped on e-commerce and selling online um, in the beginning, those risk takers who took that leap, um, do you want to be first to market to be able to go out to your client base and say, yeah, I, I'm, I'm savvy. I'm on the cutting edge. I am accepting crypto as payment um, from my clients and I can set up a company store for you that accepts crypto. So if you are interested in that, I can work with you to show you how to set that up and make that all happen. So if anyone again wants to take that journey with me, um, reach out. So mainstream platforms like PayPal and Venmo now allow consumers to pay in crypto. So more and more adoption by um, our clients is happening in the way they do business and the way they pay for things in their personal lives. So it becomes less scary and less foreign the more our clients um, start to use the technology. So that's happening. I'm sure you've read about that in the news. So my goal is for our industry not to be slow to adopt this new technology. Um, I would love to see us show the world that we, we can do it and we can be out in front and we can make amazing things happen. So in our industry with company stores, Shopify, WooCommerce, Magento and WordPress all can connect to payment gateways. Um, so there's already the plugins and the technology that exists to make that happen. And then there's middleware that can take it one step further like Circle and Bloomy, which allow for even deeper financial solutions like converting currencies, settling payments and other technology that connects to the payment gateway. But the payment gateway on its own can be significant for distributors. So why use a crypto payment gateway? Well, what does it do for you? What does that even mean? So it means that you can take online payments in addition to fiat and credit cards, you can add cryptocurrency as a payment option. And if you think of the user interface or the user experience, it's very similar to a shopping cart. It's just another choice in the payment method. So it's not a heavy lift to add this to your payment platforms and have your clients and your, your customers um, just see it as another way to pay. So you can accept payment in a variety of currencies, cryptocurrencies, and then you can immediately convert that into fiat if you choose. And, um, you know, why, why consider this, guys? Why consider this um, sort of risky new technology? And to me, it's to be the first to market. Set yourself apart. Make yourself unique and special. Um, crypto transactions occur very quickly, instantly, um, as opposed to a little bit longer through the traditional banking system. Security is second to none. Everything is verified on the blockchain as we've talked about a bunch of times. You can save on fees and it's simple. Crypto payment gateways have been created to make the user experience very similar to what they experience now paying with credit cards and fiat. 
I borrowed this from Bloomy. Thank you, Mike Wise, for letting me uh, use your, your image here. Um, because I think this is a great snapshot of showing distributors how uh, payments can be accepted and how Bloomy and a payment gateway uh, make things work. So you see WooCommerce and Magento on the left. Um, and then you can see accept crypto and you can receive it in crypto. You can accept crypto on your platform, but receive those funds in fiat. You can accept in fiat and convert that to crypto. You can accept fiat and receive, receive it in fiat. So there's several different ways and um, middleware and gateways that come into play to make this happen. But the technology has been developed to the point where it's super easy and seamless to make this happen. So in my mind, what are promo applications for crypto payments? Traditional invoices, suppliers can take crypto, um, the portals are very easy to set up, and distributors can take payments from clients. Company stores, again, to me, this is what really jazzes me up. Company stores for clients who are savvy in the tech world, in the crypto space, Offer them the opportunity to take crypto on their company store, sell an NFT wearable that, that can be worn in their metaverse or at their virtual conference. Um, so I think a, a really sassy application for our industry is company stores. Worldwide commerce. Um, many of us do business with clients in other countries, and sometimes that's a pain point. Um, I believe that crypto payment applications diminish that pain point significantly. And then, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, minting and sell selling NFTs for brands and charities um, as a way to generate excitement and pizzazz and drive um, eyeballs to your clients. So again, love to talk more to anybody who's interested in trying some of that stuff. So platforms in the promo space that work can work with a crypto payment gateway. These are not the only ones, but the most, I think, frequently used in our industry, Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, WordPress, OpenCart. Um, sorry, I have WordPress there. Oh, one is WordPress for e-commerce. E um, and then here are some payment gateways, coin payments, Binance Pay, BitPay, and Coinbase Commerce. These are some of the top rated ones, but they're not the only ones. So how would you like to learn more? Contact me. And of course, on social media, uh, Twitter, Telegram, Clubhouse, Discord, Reddit, YouTube, lots of data out there on all of these topics. I encourage folks to join the Boston Blockchain Association, even though it has Boston in the name, it's a worldwide organization. And then there are some um, educational groups that are offering certification courses and things like that. So that's the end of my presentation today. I hope I didn't freak everybody out and give too much, but um, in a nutshell, those are the things that I think will change our industry. I love it. That is so awesome. I know we talked before it that uh, this is a brand new way. This is going to be adopted. Um, it is going to take a while with this is early days. So you guys, if this sounds like, oh my gosh, yeah, right. You're, you know, it's a pipe dream. Just think about the people in the 1920s that were talking about the whole new credit application because there was the whole great depression that was about to happen. So this is just another way that we can do business in ways that we're able to do business. Yeah. Uh, and I think, uh, by the way, she is going to send me this deck and I will put the link uh, down here in the chats on social media. And I'll also include it on the uh, promo journal repost on Tuesdays. Um, but that is go back in there and check out that, that, uh, that slide that she had there from Bloomy, because that will help answer the number one question. And the number one rebuttal I get from everybody who wants to talk about cryptocurrency is, well, sure. How do I keep the lights on? There are ways you can do that. If you have to have physical cash, if you have to have traditional money, you can do that. It's very easy. There are platforms out there that are doing that already. Um, 
there's not millions of them, but there's a lot. And uh, as we continue to add users, they'll continue to add features. So uh, yeah, I love yeah, the idea so too, Lisa. You said something so fantastic. Let's not let our industry be the last one in this. We are so, yeah. it, it, historically, we have been so late to jump on trends and I would love for our industry to jump on this one first. So I appreciate you challenging the industry to the- Yeah, to so that. reach out. And I, I do want to mention if it makes people feel better, um, overstock.com was one of the first like retail platforms to accept crypto. And now they carry crypto on their balance sheet as a way to invest and grow their, their war chest, their treasure chest. So another way that I didn't really touch on is if you do accept crypto and you want to keep it in crypto, crypto, then that can become an investment for your company. So, um, so many things to think about. Um, thank you, Brandon. And I do want to, I am going to watch Ready Player One because I haven't seen it. I've only read about it. And I think that will help everybody um, who's listening get their heads around metaverses and, and NFTs and, and uh, virtual reality stuff. So um, looking forward to taking this journey with everybody. Yeah, that is awesome. You're going to enjoy that movie. And everybody else who's listening, go check out Ready Player One. It totally <laughs> helps you understand where this stuff is going. As a reminder, you guys, this is the last time Express Training Bites is going to be on Thursdays. We are moving to the first and third Tuesdays of the month. That's Tuesday, not Thursday. So uh, thank you so much, you guys. Thank you so much, Lisa, for taking time yeah. out of your day and thank putting you. this together thank you guys. for us. Such an awesome presentation and you broke it up flawlessly. You helped bring it down into our industry. And I, I know people are going to get a bunch out of it. They may not be able to wrap their heads around it right now, but you are definitely uh, moving our industry in the right direction. Thank you so much. And thank you for giving me the platform. You guys took a leap of faith with me and I appreciate it. So welcome to the future. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, guys. We'll see you on uh, July 20th, which is a Tuesday. <laughs> Bye.